Good morning. I will be right with you. Hang tight. Hi, Leslie. I will be right with you. Good morning. Let me move this message to you right here. Take that off. Hello, hello. How are you today? Happy Monday. Happy first day of June. Hopefully June is going to be much better than it was in May. It's been a tough spring, but we are getting through it, right? So I have my morning cup of coffee number two here ready to go. It says relax on it. Occasionally I do. Occasionally I don't. Today's one of those days where I'm going to be super busy, and um, we're going to be doing two projects today, actually. Um, but before I get started with that, I did want to come on and remind you that I have something super fun for you guys. Um, last, I think it was Friday, we made um, this really cute box frame with um, the Sweet Summer Watermelon inside of it, and I got so many compliments on it that I went, you know what? I can't be selfish, I have to share this, and I make I make kits for you. So if you would like a kit to make this beautiful uh, watermelon piece, super cute for summer. By the way, it can stand up or hang on, hang on the wall. Um, I have these bundles all ready to go. I have, All I have to do is order the transfers for everybody. I have eight kits left. So if you would like one, it comes with everything. It comes with the box frame, it comes with the watermelon slice, it comes with chalk paste a mini squeegee, ribbons, and the pop dots, actually every single thing that you need to complete this kit. So if while you are watching, you would like the watermelon kit, please uh, write watermelon in the comments and I will be sure to reserve one for you. So it comes with the ribbons too, if I didn't mention that. But today we are going to be do, yep, I have one for you, Leslie. I have just uh, got to order the transfers and we'll be bundling those up soon. So today what we're going to be working on are two different projects. Um, the first one is a t-shirt and the second one, you can see behind me over there, is the star. So that is another project. It's not a project that I made, but I posted a link to a website where they um, showed you how to make those. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. And we're going to dress this one up because it's looking a little bit lonely, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to get started with this t-shirt. And um, this is just a t-shirt that I picked up, I think, at Walmart. You can use any kind of t-shirt that you want, any kind of fabrics. Um, I'm not sure how the loopy fabrics would work, work with, like, a towel. Good morning, Jean. Um, but today we're going to be working on a t-shirt. And before you uh, put your ink on your t-shirt, you're going to absolutely want to put something in between the layers of the t-shirt. So Chalk Couture, let me, oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Hold ya. Sorry, <laughs> I get ahead of myself here. Okay, we'll do this. Picture in picture, there we go. I'll switch it over, there we go, sorry about that. Um, so in between the layers of your t-shirt, you're gonna wanna put something that will keep it from sliding um, and it'll, it'll prevent the ink from going from the from top of your t-shirt down to the back side because you don't wanna have splotchy looking uh, back, right? So this is a um, inking mat by Chalk Couture. Um, we have these available on my website. However, if you have a, um, a Cricut mat or a Silhouette mat, something that is sticky on one side, um, that, hi Lisa, um, and that the ink won't go through, that'll work too. Um, I've seen other people use a piece of cardboard and that is okay, but it doesn't hold the t-shirt um, firm to the surface uh, because it'll slip around a little bit and you won't get quite as good a result. So this is an inking mat by Chalk Couture. It's got a cover on the top. I, if you can see, it's been well loved. I've used it a lot. Good morning, Miss Linda. How are you today? Hi, Christine. So I'm gonna just stick this inside of my t-shirt. I'm gonna try doing this with the top uh, plastic layer on because it's so sticky that sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get in into the t-shirt into the right spot. So I'm gonna try putting it in 
with the plastic on top to see if that makes it easier. So, let's see. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Happy June. So, this um, project here was actually inspired by, I hate to say it, but what I've been watching on the news. I don't know about you guys, but it's so disturbing. Um, we went from talking constantly about COVID to now all we talk about is rioting and looting and it's just heartbreaking and everything's been heartbreaking lately, but we are strong and we are going to get through this. So I'm pulling the plastic out. Okay, that worked pretty well. That's it. Got to say. So I'm just going to smooth this out so that the mat is approximately in the center of my shirt. And the area that I'm going to be inking is nice and smooth. So, let me know if you've ever used ink before. Tell me, tell me. This is an interesting color. It's kind of like a mocha. Mocha. Okay. So that feels pretty smooth. And as I said before, the, um, the design that I... I'm using on this shirt is inspired by what I saw in the news this morning, which was lots of rioting and looting and mischief like that. It's not mischief. It's just terrible. Anyway, this one is called Kindness Changes Everything. And um, I think if everybody was just a little kinder to each other, the world would be a much better place. So I'm just going to wear that on my shirt. So Kindness Changes Everything is a B size transfer. And as I said, today I'm going to be using ink on this, but you can also use chalk on it too. So there's uh, lots of different places that you can use this um, to hang on your walls or make a garden sign with it or make a t-shirt. Lots to do. So let me pull this out. This is a brand new transfer I have not used before. Uh, and I am going to write, kindness changes everything on the back. Probably could have just written kindness, but that's okay. And my initials on the front and back as well. I'm just gonna put this over here so I don't get the wet ink on my shirt. And we're just gonna remove this from the transfer. And here's a trick for you guys if you haven't learned this already. Thank you, Jean. I think it's really perfect and meaningful for right now. Um, I've seen people struggling trying to get their transfers off of the carrier sheet. But really, if you take your thumb and just roll it around on the edge, it should peel right up just like that. So um, after we've used this transfer, I'm going to wash it with just plain tap water um, and on both sides. And then I'm going to put it sticky side up, super sticky right here on this side. Dry it sticky side up. And when it's dry, I'm going to return it to the carrier sheet. Um, this side of the carrier sheet is super slick and shiny and it's perfect for um, putting your transfer back on so you can use it again. The back side of it is more of a matte finish and you don't want to attach it to that side because um, it's a little bit hard to be to take off, sometimes even impossible. Um, so writing on the back of it reminds me not to put it on the matte side. So I also put my initials on there because if I'm sharing or if I'm using it in a group, um, I'll remember that that is mine because my initials are on everything. So if I was working this on a chalkboard or using it on a different kind of surface that wasn't fuzzy like this, I would do something called fuzzing. And that would be to attach uh, attach and reattach this, take it off, put it on, to soften up the adhesive on the back side. Some of our transfers are super, super sticky, but that's okay on a t-shirt because um, it's it'll be easy to remove no matter what. So I am gonna fold back the top corner. Here's another little tip for you. I'm gonna fold back that top corner to make it easier to grab when I'm ready to release it. And I'm gonna find a happy spot in the center of my t-shirt. Um, I prefer v-neck t-shirts. And this one kind of gives is good because it gives you a center point to start with. So that looks right about the right place. And I'm gonna rub this down nice and hard. So you don't have to rub the whole thing on, but just around where the openings are. Where you can see the t-shirt coming through is actually a silk screen. And um, that is what gives us so much detail on our, our, our pieces. So 
If while you're watching, you are enjoying what you're seeing, please hit the S-H-A-R-E button. We're not supposed to say that, so now I say sprinkle. So I'll sprinkle my video so your friends and family can see what we're up to and how much fun and easy um, this is to work with. Coffee time. Okay, so the colors that I'm going to be using today are, interesting enough, interestingly enough, black and white. I think it's a kind of appropriate thing at this time. So what my plan is, is I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll do kindness in white, everything in black, and then I'm going to do the ombre method right through the center of changes where I'm going to do the top in white and the bottom part in black and blend them together because we all should be blending together. Good morning, Doris. How are you today? So when you're working with ink, the hardest part for me is remembering to check my fingers to make sure there's no ink on them because I'm a little bit messy and that's okay. Um, but that helps me to not put black ink on my fingers and then touch myself all over the place like this. So I'm gonna open these up and I try to open them to the side because sometimes, oh my gosh, this one's on tight. All right, pardon the banging, but I gotta hit this on the edge. Sometimes the jars are very tight and you just need to tap them off a little bit. Oh my gosh. This one is not going to open. I need a hammer. Wow. Okay, this is really weird. <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm just gonna see if I get another jar of white. I don't. Dang. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yay, hallelujah. Hi, Suzanne. Okay, we got it. Thanks for bearing with me on that. So I'm gonna be using white and I'm gonna be using black and this again is ink, not chalk. The ink is used for things that are permanent, like clothing, um, and you can use, also use it on things like pottery. So if you wanted to do a mug, see, I just got a little ink on my finger. A mug or a plate, anything that you can heat set in the oven, you would use inks on. Um, if you can, like I said, iron it, you can, you can use the inks also. So this is permanent, it will not wash off, and I'll tell you about heat setting it in just a moment. Another thing that I love about our inks is that they seem to stay nice and smooth. Um, I don't think I've ever had to add water to my inks to thin them. Just making sure that actually is ink. Um, so this little jar of black is a two ounce jar and those were available when I first became a Chuck Couture designer back, let's see, October of two years ago. 19, actually 18, my goodness, I've been around a while. Um, so it's still perfect and it's still going good. So I'm just gonna move that off to the side and check my fingers once again. So what I'm again gonna do is I'm gonna do kindness in white and everything in black. And then I'm gonna do a blend of the two right in the center. Good morning, Cherie. All right, so I'm using a mini squeegee today. And we're going in with the black, checking my hands, check, 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 check. One of the wonderful things about using our inks is that um, they don't dry as fast as chalk, so you have a little bit more time to play. And I'm gonna put this on a little bit thick. I'm not worrying about it drying so much as sometimes the fabric absorbs um, the ink a little bit more than, the ch more than um, you would think. And I want a nice, crisp, dark line. So let's get this going. I think I got it all. Now I'm going to grab my weight. Another squeegee. Let's see if I can move this a little bit for you. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for S-H-A-R-ing my, my video this morning. I've got another project to do with you as soon as I'm done with this one. Just a quick one, really quick. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, I need to 
pop my glue gun. Hang in there. Okay. It's on. Let's finish this up. I have another project tomorrow. I'm so excited to show you. Ooh, so fun. I worked on it this weekend. And I made it for nothing. Even better, right? Okay, so the top part. I'm going to just leave that for now. And I'm going to grab my black. Okay. And I'm just going to do like the top half of all of the letters. Top half. This is how you do ombre. If you guys have any questions along the way, just please ask. Happy to answer your questions. This is all covered. You can see where it absorbs into the t-shirt. Yeah. Okay, I am going to squeegee off most of this and put it back into the jar. I don't want it too thick there. Because when I blend it, it could get messy. Okay, one more piece right here. I'm going to go in with the white and do the bottom half of the letter. Hi, Corinne. Thank you. We're doing great. How about you guys? All right. Now I'm going to do the bottom half of the letters. And I'm being careful not to let my squeegee touch the black yet. That will contaminate the rest of my white as I'm going along. And I'm not trying to do that. Go just before it. All right, we're almost done. Get to the end here. And I'm gonna squeegee out most of this white. I'm also gonna grab the, the white on the bottom. Pull that. Now I'm going to grab the rest of this loose black that I have up here and put that back in the jar. Got to be careful not to put it back in the white jar. Okay, now I'm going to take another piece of towel. I am, uh, as I've said, as you can see, I always get ink on my fingers. Can't help it. Sorry, you guys can't see me. Ha! Huh? There we go. All right, now I'm gonna get my water out and just put a little bit on my finger off to the side, just a tiny little bit. Now I'm gonna get inky because I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to blend the black and the white together and we're gonna get that cool ombre look here. Don't let me touch this with this finger after I think we're done, almost done. Make it right here a little bit more. Okay. All right, so we are ready to remove this transfer. Let me get as much ink off of my fingers as I possibly can. I don't ruin my shirt. You ready? Let's peel and reveal. I was going to do white on the top and black on the bottom, but I didn't. Yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> there we go. What do you think? What do you think? I think it looks pretty darn good. So this is going to dry in, I don't know, a little while. I can hit it with my heat tool. 
to um, dry it faster. If you are using a heat tool to dry something um, on fabric and you have a mat beneath it, be very careful not to overheat it because it will warp your mat no matter what kind it is. Just the heat from that will bump it all up and it doesn't look as pretty so, and it'll get be a little bit easy, uh, harder to work with. So I'm just going to set this to the side so it can dry. I hope you liked it. We absolutely could add um, some embellishments to this if we wanted to, but I think I'm just going to keep it simple for today. Um, I think it's a, a, a good message to, uh, to everybody. Kindness definitely changes everything. So I'm going to put this to the side after I clean this up a little bit. Do you guys have any questions about using inks? Oh, you know what I should tell you is how to heat set this. So after it is dry, um, and again, you can heat it up and dry it, or you can just let it sit and it will dry um, a couple hours usually. I would make sure it was nice and dry, but after it's dry, you're going to heat set it with an iron. Um, I typically would suggest using a something called a pressing cloth, but I don't have one. I've never had one, or you can use parchment paper. Um, between the fabric and your iron. I did iron one time without putting something in between and I got ink inside of my iron, which was a mess. So don't do that. If you don't, I've actually used regular um, computer paper and that worked fine. So you're gonna do it on four minutes front and back on medium heat. Just keep your, your iron moving and it'll be set. You can put them in the washer, the dryer, no problems at all. Trying to get it all off my hands. How do I make such a mess? I just don't know. All right, so I'm gonna move this to the side and I'll be right back and we will do our second little project. So I'll throw this on the floor down here. Oh, it looks so cool. Really looks good. All right, so as I was saying, I wanted to work on this little star. Um, I posted something like this a couple days ago on my Facebook page. And um, yes, this weekend I went out in my garage and I had some sticks left over because we remodeled our basement recently. We've done all kinds of shiplap and cute stuff in there. And I had some scraps of wood that I thought would be perfect for this star project, and it is. However, if you are thinking about doing this, I would suggest that you use thinner wood. This is, um, I'm gonna say almost a half an inch thick, about a half an inch thick, which made it really difficult to bend. You can't bend them, the sticks at all. And when they're layered like this, they need to have a little bit of give. Otherwise, you have to do what I did right here. I don't know if you can see this, is I put a little block in there to make up for um, the height that this arm of the star uh, led to. So. Um, this isn't going to be a really big project, but I did want to decorate it up a little bit today. I didn't have the little pip berries that was shown in the picture, but I do have an American flag. And I do have some little red flowers. And I also have um, a cute little burlap bow to decorate this up with. What do you think? All right. Well, I hope you like it because I'm going to see if my glue gun is hot enough yet. We'll put this baby together. Now it looks ready. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom layer with this little bit of uh, red flowers. And I want them right about here. If you're going to be putting this outside um, and it, it could get very hot, I would suggest using wire. You might want to glue it together first, but then wire it in. Because sometimes when things have been hot glued together, um, they tend to release if they get too hot. So the American flag I want right about here. I'll grab a little more glue. So yeah, I got to, I've pl been playing with power tools. You guys would be so proud of me. I'm kind of proud of myself for that. The only one that I'm totally terrified of is a table saw. So <laughs> if I have big things to cut, I, I grab Steve and convince him that he can go golfing if he'll cut stuff for me. <laughs> Seems to be a good thing. Seems to be a good thing. So here's my little bow I just made out of burlap. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree yesterday. Hey Lucille, welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna glue the bow on. 
and we will be ready for the 4th of July. Okay. Yeah, again, if this is going to be something you'll have outside, especially if it's going to be in the sun, you might want to wire all this stuff in. If you're going to be inside, I think the glue is fine. There we go. How am I about uh, Leslie? Leslie's my bow girl. She's really good at it and I'm not. <laughs> but there's a, a really cute idea for 4th of July. I think if I was gonna do this again, I would look for something really, really thin, almost like um, a paint stick, you know what I mean? Jelly beans. All right, so I'm gonna give you one more opportunity to take a peek at this. This is uh, my project from Friday. If, you're just, if you join me after I talked about this earlier. This is a project that I made Friday and it involves me making watermelon slices on my scroll saw. Uh, we are using a box frame, we've got some chalk, we have a beautiful sweet summer transfer, as well as um, ribbons and some string and pop dots to hold everything together. And I have bundles available, you can see them on my Facebook page, my business page, and my VIP group. Um, where you can get everything that you want in one kit to make everything you see here super super cute I only have eight of these available, but if you would like one um, just put Watermelon in the comments and I will be sure that you get one of these little cute patooties and again this transfer is reusable You can make t-shirts with them. You can put them on your your tote bags You can make all kinds of really fun things with them. So um, Thank you for watching this morning. I hope you enjoyed if you have any questions, be sure to uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you, Leslie and Doris. You too. I feel like I'm carrying a gun here. Put that away. <laughs> um, let's see. The other thing I was going to say is thank you for sharing. Um, if you are watching this on the replay, hit that S-H-A-R-E button so that um, other people can see uh, what Chalky Tour is all about. If you are interested in being in my VIP group, and guess what? There are going to be some specials in your future. Please write VIP in the comments and we'll get you in there. Um, if you think what I do looks like fun and you'd like to make money crafting like I do, uh, write join in the comments and I'll absolutely get you information about that too. So that is what I have for today. Tomorrow I have a big project um, that I worked on this weekend. I'm so excited. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of a hint. We got a a new vanity for our bathroom and it came in a big big heavy box on a pallet and I'm gonna do something with that pallet tomorrow so be sure to tune in at 10 a.m. thank you so much for watching Jeannie got you got a watermelon for you um, if you are doing a porch pickup it's no shipping charges no extra shipping but if you would like me to mail it to you I can also do that so just let me know I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. have a wonderful day Bye-bye.